Multiplayer is one of the biggest features in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, and a lot of people had a lot of questions about all the things you can do because it was really confusing. So what I did was I did a lot of testing and I provided a lot of answers to a lot of questions you had on multiplayer. And I just want to note that this was tested in local multiplayer, which means it's most likely going to be applied on multiplayer online. Let's get into it. Number one, how do you host an online session? Press X and open the Poke Portal. If you are local, you don't have to connect to the internet. And if you are trying to go online, just press L and then open up the Union Circle. After that, you're going to form a group and then you'll get a link code if you are the host. With that link code, you're then going to provide that to anyone who is going to join your world. Remember, if the host disconnects, the whole entire session ends. So make sure the person who starts this session has very good internet connection. If you're trying to join the online session, just follow the exact same steps of opening up the Poke Portal Union Circle and inputting the code that the player host gives to you. After that, you'll start your game and you will teleport into a random spot in the game that it decides you to be in, where the Pokemon Center is, the Pokemart and all that. And you can see each other in game and wave at each other and emote and just like that, you have been connected to each other. Can Pokemon Scarlet and Violet players connect to each other? Yes, they absolutely can. And if they couldn't, there would be something wrong with Game Freak and Pokemon for not letting you do that. So you can connect with the opposite version of the game. And because we can connect with the opposite version of the game, a lot of people were asking, can you capture Scarlet and Violet Pokemon? that are version exclusive. I would like to give you some great news. The answer to that question is yes, you can absolutely catch Scarlet and Violet Pokemon version exclusive. Now, for this example, my player was from Pokemon Scarlet and the other player was from Pokemon Violet. And when I joined the Pokemon Violet world, we went to a location. And when we climbed up that mountain, we were first able to see a bunch of Larvitar, which was strange because this was Pokemon Violet world. After we caught that Larvitar, then all of a sudden we saw Baggin. And then Baggin is a Violet exclusive. And I was seeing that in the same game as a Larvitar. They were both there. So what we then discovered was that all the version exclusive Pokemon in the overworld are tied to the players walking around and spawning them in. And that's when we also wanted to test out by going to the desert. And when I walked in, I saw a stone journer and the other version captured that version exclusive, which is Scarlet. And then we walked all the way north to a beach where we saw a bunch of ice cubes. We also caught them there, which is a version exclusive to Pokemon Violet. So based on this information, you only have to connect two opposite versions once and you don't have to go back and forth to try to get the opposite version exclusive. So that myth is put to rest. Just have two versions connect together and you'll find all the Pokemon spawns you need to. Do you have complete free roam or do you have to stay in proximity to the host? You are allowed to do whatever you want and go wherever you want in the host world. Speaking of proximity, you should stay in proximity to the channel by hitting that subscribe button and helping Maridon catch all these dragon Pokemon. Seriously, you don't want to miss videos like these because these are going to be game changing for you on your adventure in Paudia. So please subscribe. How far away can you be from the host? You can be as far as you need to be from the host. Just keep this in mind that you will initially see each other on the map. If you open the minimap, you can see the player icons. As you start to get further out from each other, you will then see the icons separating further. If you get really, really far, the game might glitch a little and you might not see the player's icon on the map if you go to far extreme ranges, but don't worry, you are still in the multiplayer session unless the game tells you you have disconnected from it. I've also noticed things that if a player enters into a gym area, or if a player opens a picnic or enters an instance of something in the game, you won't see their icon on the map anymore. But you may see something on the right side saying that they may be catching a Pokemon, doing something. The icons notify you the activity of the other player. This one went a little viral on Twitter when I tweeted it out, but can you steal someone's shiny Pokemon in multiplayer? The answer to that question is absolutely yes. If a shiny Pokemon spawns in the game and you both see that shiny Pokemon, it's really going to be who is going to interact with that shiny Pokemon first. A great example over here is with this lovely new electric flying type Pokemon that we encountered on a North Beach. We both saw the Pokemon and to test this, I interacted with it since I was connected to the Violet world and I bumped into a shiny and it was shiny and the other player just has to watch in the background with absolute sadness as you catch this Pokemon. They cannot interact with it. They cannot bump into it. Once you have engaged in battle, it's done. And once you catch the Pokemon, it's yours. And the other player can just stare at it when you throw out the Pokeball and be like, yo, I got this shiny. <laughs> Can you do group picnics? You can absolutely join each other's picnics in the game. Now, there's going to be something called the picnic host. What this means is it's 
anyone's choice to start a picnic in the world. The first person to start the picnic in that world is going to be called the picnic host. At that point, nobody else can make a picnic because the game will notify you that someone already started a picnic. There'll also be an icon indicated on the left of the screen saying that someone started a picnic. The only way you can join that is by going to them, entering into their picnic by confirming, and then being part of it. The picnic host is going to be able to have all six of their Pokemon out at the same time. Anyone else who joins can only bring out the first Pokemon from their party. So this applies when you even have more players. It's only going to be the first Pokemon in your party if you're joining and you're a guest to someone's picnic. Can sandwiches that the host makes boost other players? The best one to test this out was with encounter power. Now, what we did was we, for example, if you were to eat something that boosted electric type, then when that person walks out and starts to spawn Pokemon around them because of the encounter power being up for electric Pokemon, those spawns will be electric Pokemon. Kind of sound familiar to how the version exclusive Pokemon spawned around those players? It's almost exactly the same thing and it kind of gives you an idea how spawns start to work in the game. Now, it doesn't have to be the host to initiate this boost. It could even be the guest player. So anyone can initiate this sandwich that will boost something and people will benefit from the players that are around. The next question coming up is, can you stack encounter powers together? Now, not necessarily stack them, but each player will be able to cause an increase of something. And if you take both those players and put them together, then both the encounter powers of their tables are going to line up around the spawns around them, if that makes sense at all. For example, I was able to get electric sandwiches and the other player, my wife, she was able to get fire sandwiches or a fire encounter booster. We both got these boosters and then went out to test them. Wherever I walked first and spawned in Pokemon, they were electric. Wherever she walked ahead of me and spawned in Pokemon, they were fire types. Whenever we were in somewhat close of a proximity range to each other, we started to see electric and fire Pokemon. In this case, it was a bunch of Pikachu and Charcadet showing up on the map. When we started to walk together to test this a little further, we then just noticed it was nonstop, just electric and fire Pokemon literally just next to each other at all times. So this is a great thing to know. And it is actually a big deal because if you join a world and that person is in the end game and they are making shiny sandwiches, then you can benefit from that shiny sandwich because that player just has to walk in front of you. And when that player walks in front of you and spawns in Pokemon, they have a chance of bringing out a shiny Pokemon that you as the person who is around them can walk into and benefit from. So they're gonna control the shiny spawns and the boosted shiny spawns and that encounter type. Well, you can also benefit from that if you don't have an encounter boost yourself. If both of you have encounter boost stuff for two different types of Pokemon, then everyone is winning and it's going to be a shiny fest of Pokemon and spawns. So have a lot of fun with that. And I hope you guys can test that out and give me some feedback down in the comments below. It might even get more crazier when you have four players joining a multiplayer or local world. Can both players continue their own stories while playing together? The answer is yes. You cannot team up for your own stories together but you can do stories at your own pace together. We wanted to test this out in the most extreme way. So what I did was I had a new Switch copy from Pokemon Scarlet play with another copy from Pokemon Violet who was already in the end game. That end game had gym rematches only on the map. And on my map, I had all the team stars available, all the gym leaders available and all the Titans. I have not touched one of them. So on my map, I could see all of them. And on the other map, you can only see the gym leader rematches. To test this further, we went inside of the Glaciato gym to see what would happen in my copy of the game it was a regular empty gym where i had to talk to the receptionist and they give me the gym challenge in the violet end game they saw grusha who was waiting for a rematch if that helps you confirm that stories are completely different well then there it is and you can do whatever you want but you can also play together speaking of end game players if you join an end game players world another question was can you buy the items from that end game players world you cannot if you go to the pokemart and look at the items it's going to be your own world's items i did this on my pokemon scarlet and i had the base items you get when you have not completed any gym battles at all in the game while the Violet player is going to have a huge list because they completed everything. Can players do mass outbreaks at the same time? Players can absolutely do mass outbreaks at the same time, but the mass outbreaks are going to be tied to the host of the game. So whatever they had naturally in the world is going to show up when they host the game for you. So you're going to see their mass outbreaks. You can both approach those mass outbreaks together and start auto battling. In fact, mass outbreaks are so big that having two players will probably make the job easier 
And if you have to get a shiny Pokemon, it's going to be a fight for it. So maybe you can negotiate and decide with your friends and other people you connect with online, which person is going to get what shiny Pokemon first. Now, I do want to talk about one version exclusive Pokemon, Armourouge and Seraledge. This one's a little different because you need an item that you can buy from Zapapico Town. In my game, when I joined the Pokemon Violet version, I walked into that area where there was a vendor that gives you the armor unfortunately for my luck it was not the violet vendor it was my same exact guy from pokemon scarlet and for the violet player they're going to see their exact same lady from their game giving them that specific armor so if you want to get cerulege you're going to have to join a terra raid den or you're going to have to have that person trade over a pokemon that is carrying the item that gives it to you so you can evolve it and have your original trainer name on that opposite version exclusive pokemon how do terra raid battles work in multiplayer when you are in the host world you cannot interact with any of the terra raid dens this basically means you cannot start the matches what you can do is you can go up to them touch the terra raid dens and grab lp but it's up to the host to start it now let's just say you're somewhere else completely in the game and you're doing whatever you want and then the host clicks on the terra raid battle and initiates it you will then get a pop-up on your screen saying that person has started a terror raid battle press this button to join which is really cool because you could be doing anything else you want and that icon appears and you hit join you do all the menu stuff and just like that you battle it out and then when you're done with that terror raid battle it just teleports you back to whatever each player was doing in the world. So remember, Terra Raid battles are controlled by the host. Also, if you are a new player and you walk into the host world, those Terra Raid dens are going to be the exact same for the endgame players. So maybe you can get a little bonus experience candies and stuff by having a good player carry you through these Terra Raid dens in their world. How do Pokemon interactions work? We've talked about shinies that if you catch a shiny, it's not going to be there for the other person. But this also applies for any single Pokemon that you interact with. The moment that you engage that Pokemon in battle, it is going to disappear for the other player. Whether you destroy it, whether you catch it, or here's the worst part, if you run away from it. Yeah, if you bump into a shiny Pokemon and then decide, hmm, I want to give this to my friend and you run away, that Pokemon will despawn. So please be careful when you're doing these things. If you see a shiny Pokemon and you want to be nice to someone, don't interact with it. Just stand there, look at it, do an emote and clap or something and have that player run up to that Pokemon. Another glitch with Pokemon interactions is when you go to a new area and you get the sign or symbol saying you've entered area one, area two, certain Pokemon will just disappear right off the bat. When I was running around in my game on my Coridon mount, I was walking towards a town and I just noticed a shiny Lechonk, and by the time I was going to turn around, I initiated the screen that said Area 1 or something like that, that you could see in this footage, and you could see that little Lechonk in the corner. I missed it, and it just poofed off my map. It's gone. It's never coming back. They disappear. So please be careful when you're getting close to an area in multiplayer, because it, that it's very sad. You just don't, don't let that happen to you. When everyone disconnects from the world, what happens? When you disconnect from another player's world, your screen will just return you back to your own world. You will no longer see their mass outbreaks. You will no longer see their Terra Raid dens. And any combined version exclusive Pokemon will disappear off your map. And you will just be stuck in your own world, all lonely, playing single player. But no one can see your shiny, so that's a good thing, right? And I trade in my friend's world. You can trade in your friend's world by opening up the multiplayer menu and selecting trade and then enter a link code and boom, you can trade with somebody. And you also battle with your friend's world. You can absolutely battle with people in their friend's world. All you have to do is plug in a code, initiate the battle, set up the rules, and it's going to be whoever hosts the battle, whoever started the link code for the battle. And what's going to happen is once you set that all up, select your team, you're then going to be teleported into the schoolyard. You're going to have your fight there. And once you're done, you're going to get teleported back to wherever you were before you did that. And it's going to be right in the other player's world that you joined ahead of time. If you're watching this video up to this point, you are very lucky because now you know that you can breed Pokemon with your friends. Yes, that is possible. I didn't believe it at first, but you can. Now, the way to do this is we both first got egg power level one, and then we joined into the picnic. The Pokemon Violet player, my wife, had Ditto, and I had Armor Rouge. And what they did was they started to make eggs, and both of us started checking the basket, and eggs just started to appear and fill into the basket, which is really cool. And by the way, I think it's up to 10 eggs that can stack at max, so you can just AFK there, 10 eggs show up, 10 eggs show up, and you guys can run around the entire world and start hatching. This is really big for breeding because this can imply that players with high level dittos or 5 IV dittos or 6 IV dittos 
can add an item onto the ditto and start passing down those IVs to the baby Pokemon. In fact, it's like a group breeding activity and you and your friend can be the proud grandparents of your baby Pokemon that your children Pokemon made, if I'm saying that right. But breeding's in the game and there's a lot of mechanics that go along with it, but I will be discussing all the mechanics for this in a breeding guide. Speaking of doing things together in Picnic, you can also make sandwiches together. So you don't just have to make your own sandwich or buy a sandwich from a marketplace. You both can sit there and create the exact same sandwich together in a multiplayer sandwich menu. You just have to queue up. It'll say one out of one players, one out of two players, one out of three are joining in. And anyone who joins in is going to be able to partake of that sandwich. And the more players, the bigger the sandwich is than the single player one. And you will all have the exact same boost. And now you already know how boosts work in the game when it comes to things spawning around a player. Can you catch each other's version exclusive Paradox Pokemon? The answer is no, they do not spawn. It's your own version Paradox Pokemon that will spawn for your own version. That's it. The only way to get the opposite version is by having another game copy or by trading them over. Those are the only two options. There's just so much to do in this game and it's overwhelming. So make sure you go ahead and check out this video right over here to help you in your game.